Okay, let's get started. So you're all probably here because either you want to start an e-commerce website or you have an e-commerce problem that you'd like to solve. So for those that are considering starting e-commerce, I'd like to understand why you want to add e-commerce to your business. And so as we're going through this, please drop me a line in the Zoom chat because I will be in there chatting with you while the videos are playing. And for those of you who need to solve an e-commerce problem, I really want you to meet my friend Sam Kirkland from Epicor in the upcoming clip and see if you have answered his three fundamental questions before you built your online store to see if your problem falls into one of those areas. Now, what I love about Sam is that he breaks big, complicated issues surrounding e-commerce into simple steps, one, two, three. That's a really professional approach to large projects, or as Sam would say, how to eat an elephant one bite at a time. And for those of you who aren't aware, Epicourt is a huge e-commerce POS solution, um, and it's a provider with over 20,000 customers, $800 million in revenue, and 4,000 employees. But as you listen, you will see that what Sam has does apply to you, even if you're not an $800 million company. So take it away, Sam. You know, without the proper vision and expectations and, and business understanding, it, you're just setting yourself up for disaster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I've rescued people from that. And I yeah. also talked people out of doing e-commerce. It if if the business can't, and I had a discussion today with a farm ag store, and they're like, "Well, we're really thinking about getting into this. What help us through the process?" And I go, "Okay, well, you know, vision. What's the vision of the website? Customer retention, customer growth, geographical area, right? Or is it just to serve my customers?" And give them another option. It's not a that's not a bad vision, especially now that we 16 million people walked into our garden center. Um, or am I really looking at growing? And then the the other is really if if it is growth, what's the geographical area that I'm trying to break into? Is it U.S. Is it county? Is it state? Or you know, and if you can't answer those, you gotta have to have that like step one. That's great, Sam, because that's literally part one of my outline. I'll just, I'll just plug you in right there. I totally ripped it off from you. <laughs> and so then, you know, step, step. So I have a vision. I know what I want. And then step two is, do I have the team? Because if it's just a little bit of customer retention and a little bit of curbside and just I'm dabbling my feet, it's still with with the amount of stress that we've put on our employees this year and still today, I don't know that they could really handle that. So do we have the proper team structure in mind of what does a team look like? Because in reality, this is a separate location. It's a new store. If I'm a single store, I have to think, well, okay, I'm going to open my second store. It's an East store, but it's still a different store. And I can't tax my existing staff more than likely with running an e-commerce because one, it's not the same as retail. Uh, and, and two, it, it, you know, we, we have to react pretty quickly to get things done. And I, I just don't have the staff to do it. So, and I have to have somebody knowledgeable depending on which way I go of understanding e-commerce unless I'm going to hire that out. And if I do, then, then that's a relationship partnership you have to work with. So, and if you get that, <laughs> So that's the first two minutes, right? And then no, so that's now great. This is lovely. I'm not going to have to record anything <laughs> now. <laughs> so, you know, now then we get down to where's our data in the system? Do I have, because I really think the businesses that struggled the most were not integrated. Yes, They were absolutely. using Google Docs or mm -hmm. just putting stuff on. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't integrated with a point of sale where it's easily that I can add and remove items for sale uh, with pricing and, and all of that. And my data descriptions are clean because I have to, you know, what am I calling a, a red geranium, a RG2? Uh, I don't know what that is. It's a consumer. Um so it's, you know, that's the, the other, now I have to get my, my data in a consumer facing 
um, format, right? And the, so if I'm doing it over here and I'm not integrated, uh, why am I cleaning up this and not cleaning up my own site? So an integrated forces businesses and the business I talked to today, the way I got a little bit, bit of work to do there. Um, and the other is don't, don't consider this initially the entire store needs to go on. You know, we had Moana come up in about three weeks with 100 SKUs. They did $30,000 the first week with 100 SKUs. Uh, I didn't do the math on that, but it's it's a nice number, right? Um, so I don't, I, you know, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. And I think data cleansing cleanup is that. And the other is securing pictures, right? Because I have to have a picture, especially in this industry, to sell a product. Thank you, Sam. He's great, isn't he? And while he works with Epicor, our sponsor, I scheduled an interview with him weeks before they were on board with us. He is always my go-to guy for talking about the truly important aspects of e-commerce. And if you'll notice, he really didn't say much about tech. And there's a reason for that. And that's before you can choose and really configure your tech solution, you have to make a bunch of decisions about the three main pillars of e-commerce. And without locking these down, you'll really be flailing around. And some of you might have already experienced this. And I'm going to come back to this point, but if you're here because you do have all of the tech sorted out, but you're still having issues with your e-commerce program, it's very likely that it isn't a tech problem. It's a people or process problem. And um, we will help you solve that. And also, don't worry, we're going to get to tech in part two. So before we go to breakout, let's set the stage for your three main e-commerce decisions. So one is your vision. Ask yourself, why do I want an online store? Do you feel pressure to do one because everyone's doing it? And if this is this, the case, I'm just going to tell you this is not the solution. Stop, schedule a vacation, just abandon your e-commerce plans. Two, are, you, are your customers asking for it and you're trying to make shopping more convenient for them, which is a totally valid reason to do e-commerce? Or are you trying to break into new geographical areas? And if so, where? And are you planning to offer delivery? And if you are, stay tuned for our pizza delivery part of this workshop. Now I wish I had pizza. And then the last thing about why you're opening e-commerce might be, do you want to open new channels for growth and increase your revenue? And that's also a completely valid reason to want to do this, but it takes a lot of planning. And I mean, all of this takes planning, which is why your handouts total something like 40 pages. You need a business plan to embark on e-commerce, but that's part one your vision. Why do you want an online store? Then part two is the people. So you need to ask yourself if you really truly have the team that it makes to make the e-commerce happen. And if you don't, are you willing to allocate the resources, the time and the money towards building that team? So first of all, brick and mortar retail is an entirely different business than online and it requires completely different skill sets. So just because somebody is really good at selling hand to hand, you know, person to person doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be great at running your online store. So there's very much like right person, right place um, situation. Your current staff might not be the people that you need to successfully run an online store. The other thing is it's a completely different location. As Sam said, when you're opening an e-commerce store, you are literally opening another storefront. And the last time I checked, nobody can be in two places at one time, maybe in a Philip K. Dick novel, but that's about it. And if you like Philip K. Dick, just put that in the chat because we can chat about that. Anyways, um, and you wouldn't ask your existing staff to run two different locations at the same time. So um, you can't necessarily get them to run e-commerce at the same time. It is a whole, I just, I keep stressing this, it's a whole different ballpark. Um, and you don't want to overtax your existing people. And as we we're talking about this in 2020, that is a really valid concern. 
everybody is already at their max. You want to get ready for 2021, but you, if you're going to do e-com, it's very likely that you're going to need to allocate some additional resources to that. Okay. The third part is data and data is a huge part of e-commerce. If you put crap in, you're gonna get crap out. I'm sure you guys have heard that before. That's a pretty common saying. So first of all, you need to decide what you can afford and what you wanna sell. And that is an entire conversation on its own. It revolves around margin, the minimal retail price that you want to deal with, and the reasons you're offering e-com. And you don't have to sell everything online that you offer in your store or vice versa, but you do need criteria. Um, for what to sell and that's that's part of data. Then you need to clean up the data and get it organized so that it can be uploaded and easily managed. This includes clean, accurate photos and consumer facing product descriptions. You'll need to make sure that you're very clear about where you're storing and filing your data and can you easily find it and share it. And a lot of people really want all of their systems to be integrated and work together. Um, but in order to have integrated systems, you have to have clean data. And more importantly, you have to have an extremely precise process for handling data and your people need to understand the process um, and follow it. So vision, data, people. All right, so now it's time for us to go to breakouts. There will be a Garden of Words team member in each breakout session asking, do you have e-commerce and helping you guys get to know each other? And then what do you want your e-commerce website to do that it's not doing now so that we can get a feel for what everybody is facing? And then we will regroup for our first live Q&A session. Okay, welcome back everybody. It's time for part two, which is which e-commerce platform should I use? I'm sure a lot of you came into this with that as your number one question. So we wanna make sure we take care of it. Here's how I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna start by say, talking about how buying a website is a lot like buying a car. It's expensive, it's hard to figure out, it's stressful. And if you're like me and you don't know anything about cars, how do you buy a car? So if you don't know anything about cars, how do you buy a car? Well, the first thing that you do is you might ask your parents or your brother or your sister or your spouse, what car would they buy? Why do they like this model or that model? Then you might ask your friends. I know that you ask Facebook because everybody asks everything on Facebook, including what kind of paper towels to buy. A few of you smart geeks might ask the internet, so you might look at consumer reports and that sort of thing, and then you'll get conflicting information, and then you'll get so stressed out and overwhelmed that maybe you drink a bottle of booze and give up. It's terrifying, but buying a website is a lot like buying a house too. So why do people buy houses and cars so differently? Because they do. If you don't know anything about how to buy a house, or you're gonna you want to buy a house, what do you do? You ask a realtor. Then you might confirm with your friends and your parents and talk on social media. And I think I'm going to buy this house in this neighborhood. And you will basically find the data to back up what your realtor is saying. So you, you ask the realtor, you don't ask Facebook first. So what I really wanted to think about is why do people buy houses and cars so differently? And I really think it's because people don't trust car salesmen. Car salesmen have a terrible reputation. And this is actually really funny since I used to use car salesmen as my commercial for this session. Oh my gosh, Katie. Anyways, I was trying to have fun. I was making fun of making fun of this whole situation. It was very meta. All right. So people don't trust car salesmen, but they trust realtors. So when we're talking about e-commerce websites, what is the name of the type of professional that's most like a realtor when it comes to your website? And then when we figure that out, do we trust those people? 
All right, so what's the correct name of that professional? I'm going to take a guess and say that, you know, what you're going to say is a web developer. And most people think it's a web developer or a web designer. And unfortunately, I know that's, it's wrong. I, it's wrong and I know it sounds right, but it's not. And here's why. All right, so web developers have bad reps. Most people think of them like car salesmen because they've either been burned in the past by a web developer or they've heard horror stories or both. But here's the thing, web developers are really only as excellent as the plan that you give them. They're trying to help you build, developers build. They are not trying to help you plan for the most part. So web developers are the builders, it's like your house builder and you need an architect in order to get the website that you want. So what you're really looking for and what you really need is a digital business consultant. And this is probably brand new information. I don't know who watches Friends, but I, I like that reference. Brand new information. You need a digital business consultant because your e-commerce site won't work with all the planning. So you need to find a planning professional. And again, this might be new. So some of the names for people like this are web strategist, e-commerce planner, online business planner, online business consultant, e-commerce business consultant, something like that. But if the title or the name of their job description doesn't include strategy planning or business development, they are not your website realtor. They cannot and should not help you buy your house aka your website. Okay, so at the Garden of Words, we offer web development, but I'm not a web developer. I can write about three lines of code. And if you ask me to install and configure a theme, forget it. Connect a payment gateway, forget it. But we do a lot of e-commerce website work. I am a digital business development professional. I am an online business consultant and so is Steph who you'll meet during the Q&A. She's a web strategy expert among other things. So the two of us are qualified to talk with you about planning your e-commerce website or fixing problems you have with an existing e-commerce website because we work on the planning. So one of the questions I get asked constantly and that you've probably been sitting here asking is, what platform should I use? I feel like I literally get asked this question every single day. All right, so let's dive in then and figure it out. So remember the three areas that you need to know before you make your plan, your vision, your people, and your data. You've got to answer these before you take this information that I'm about to give you and choose your platform. And our handouts all 47 pages of them will help you by asking the core questions that you need to answer in order to figure out your vision, your people, and your data. They will also help you figure out how to build your website and you have a handy template that's linked in the um, main handout that will help you actually write down the plan for your web developer so they can build you what you want. It's something that we use at, at the Garden of Words to make sure we take all of the customer's vision, people, data, et cetera, down, and we can hand it to whoever is doing the actual web development, our team or somebody else. So I just went ahead and gave that to you because I really wanted you to have it. Um, because if you just show up and work with a web developer, then you know the chances are you're not gonna get what you want. So for now, Let's pretend you have your three core questions answered. You know why you want an e-commerce website. You know the type of people that will help you run it separate from existing staff and that you have wrapped your brain around the fact that it's a lot of work and it's money um, to keep your data clean, user-friendly, and accessible. All right. So if you don't know anything about e-commerce platforms, how do you choose an e-commerce platform? There's basically two types, um, open source and proprietary. So everything that you're gonna use falls into one of those categories. So we're gonna go through those. 
All right, starting with open source software. We're gonna talk about WordPress versus Magento. These are both open source. They're probably ones that you've heard about before. Open source means there are many options for hiring knowledgeable developers and they can, these websites can be configured to do anything you want it to do. Anyone with the source code um, can modify it. So the difference between WordPress and Magento is that WordPress has a lower bar to entry in terms of cost and the experience of the developer that you need. There's also a lot more WordPress developers than there are Magento developers, um, but you should probably not use WordPress with WooCommerce. You probably heard WooCommerce is the shopping cart part of it, the e-com part of it. it. You shouldn't use that if you're planning to carry 400 or more products. So WordPress has prettier themes and it's more focused on kind of the pretty pretty and the look. Magento is all about raw e-commerce power. It can be configured, it can look prettier, but if you're really concerned about your website's looks, WordPress would be the open source to use. But if you have thousands of products and all of the people and staff and procedures to back it up, then Magento is gonna be a better choice for you. All right, so proprietary software, so remember there are two types, open source where anyone who has the source code can modify it and proprietary. So proprietary software is a closed system. The only people who can work, I mean, you can update your own website, but the only people who can like modify it are people who are trained specifically in that system. And sometimes you need to be licensed in order to work on it. So the two most common types of proprietary software that most people know about are Shopify and Squarespace. So Squarespace is all about be building beautiful websites. They have a great drag and drop page editor and they have e-commerce that is perfectly adequate for a small number of products. The other one is Shopify. So Shopify is a very powerful system. Um, it can be modified a little bit more than Squarespace if you have a Shopify developer. If you don't have a Shopify developer and you don't know what you want, Squarespace is a lot more difficult to work with in terms of getting it to look the way you want it to look. Like if you log into Squarespace, first thing you see is, you know, how to design and move your stuff around on the website. If you log into Shopify, the first thing you see is an online store dashboard because they're very focused on e-commerce. Um, so there's some other things, differences um, about um, and comparisons about open source versus proprietary software. So I want to go ahead and address those. A big one is flexibility versus inflexibility. Open source software is very flexible. It can do literally anything you want. Somebody can write you code to do it. Now, that is a blessing and a curse. These can be um, open source software can be, um, websites can be overbuilt very easily. It's like buying a vacation from a travel agent and you just wanted to go to Cancun for three days and by the end of their spiel, because they're like, oh, you can do this and you can do this and you can do this and you can do this. You end up on a glamping safari in Africa with a champagne, um, sunset toast every night. And you're like, but I really just wanted to go to Mexico. I mean, none of us are going anywhere right now, so it all sounds good to me. But, you know, you can get a lot more than what you need um, with open source. So again, flexibility, blessing, and a curse. Um, the other thing that people think about a lot is ease of use. A lot of people choose proprietary software because they think that it will be easier and faster to set up, and it's not. And I can tell you that from personal experience. Um, you still have to configure um, proprietary software and add products, but um, you can get stuck. That's a big problem with proprietary. Um, I had a client on Squarespace because it was easy for them to build their site. This They already had this site when they came to me, but when they wanted to update their site, I actually have several clients in this predicament. When they wanted to update their site um, and move from the old theme, they can't because Squarespace just decided that they were not going to allow people to move thing, themes, so they just have to rebuild their entire website. 
So that's not ideal, but that is something to consider with proprietary. Alrighty, now we need to discuss something else that's a bit of an elephant in the room. We're talking so much about elephants. Here's another elephant in the room. How long do you expect your e-commerce website to last? Should you start with a smaller e-commerce website that will be less expensive to manage and build, or are you gonna take a huge bite of the technology and do the planning and hiring and training for a bigger system because you don't wanna face the rebuilding and retraining required when you grow out of your small and efficient system? And what I wanna tell you is, please expect to replace your website. Do you expect your refrigerator to last for 40 years? I mean, not really unless you have one of those super fancy rebuilt ones from the 60s. I don't even know what they're called, but no, you don't expect your refrigerator to last 40 years. Um, a car is another good example here. Most people change their cars when their circumstances change. You have two kids and an SUV works and then a third one comes along and suddenly you need a minivan, so you get the minivan. And that applies to websites. So maybe you bought a website and you also need to think about what your website's supposed to do. What are you buying and what do you want out of it? So if you bought a website for $20,000 and it generated $200,000 in sales, it did its job. It's time for you to, you know, spend some more money. And if you ignore this, if you try to keep a website um, past its um, what it's really set up to do, then you will basically like kind of kill your golden goose. The way to think about all of this is to plan your technology jumps. So you're going to go through all this planning um, with us and with your worksheets and everything, and you're gonna decide what you wanna do now. Remember that it's okay to start small and then change. I mean, unless you are a Kardashian, your first car is not a Ferrari. So most of people, you, me, everyone, would be less scared of technology if they knew how to organize their data and they knew how to hire and manage the staff needed to make technology jumps. Everything is really scary when you have no idea how to do it. And that is really where most people are with their websites. So, and this is where we're gonna talk about pizza delivery. <laughs> so I told my husband today, I was like, I, I know that we were gonna have leftovers, but I really want some really delicious pizza. So we'll see if he brings that home tonight. Anyway, one of the things about e-commerce websites is that they are a lot like delivery trucks. Suppose that you wanna run a pizza shop and an offer delivery to a few zip codes. All you really need is a bicycle with a wire basket on the front or like maybe a car, maybe a box truck. That's the right size vehicle for your pizza delivery business. But you went out and bought an 18 wheeler instead because someday you wanna be able to sell all the pizza to all the people. Now, how do you afford the payments of 5,000 a month on your 18 wheeler? How many pizzas do you have to sell in order to afford it? It's just too much too fast. And people do this all the time on the web, all the time with their websites. They buy huge machines. They set up this really fancy e-commerce system with like schedules and calendars and variants and a lot of fancy bells and whistles. And they're expensive and it creates an insane amount of pressure to actually run them. So here's a little example that occasionally I run into. So I might say to a client, the amount of sales you need to generate to pay for this machine is approximately 10 times the amount of sales you've ever generated for your business. And then they say, oops, yeah, oops. Okay, I want to touch on something real quickly here before we move on. If you've listened to all of this and what if you are saying, well, I have a working e-commerce system with an ERP and a POS and I'm still having issues with my inventory management, order fulfillment and so forth. And there might be some of you here. You're like, I already have the tech. I don't need to know what tech. I've, I've got it and it's not working. I have like good news and bad news for you, but mostly good news. If you already have all the tech and you've paid for it and it's running and all of that, 
you don't have a technology issue, you have a people and planning issue. And so you need to go back to the drawing board, use all of our worksheets and documentation, use the Facebook group, and get back to really planning your people and processes, back to the basics. But the good news is, once you get that fixed, you should be good to go. So, all right, there's a lot to talk about in terms of how to use your website, including all of the processes and getting products into the website, receiving customer orders, processing orders, fulfilling the orders, all that jazz. Like, once you have the site built, what happens? How do we do all these processes? Um, so we do cover that in extreme detail in our session two, which is the curbside pickup power up that's on January 27th. So even if you don't offer curbside, but your e-com is not running well, you are going to want to come to that session as well, because that's where we really dig into fine tuning all of the processes. So register now and sharpen your pencils. And now it's time for our next live Q&A where you can ask any questions that you want. And the team and I are here and ready to answer them for you. So ask away. Okay, welcome back to part three, which is creating an e-commerce action plan. And what we're going to focus on is people. So getting by and learning with e-commerce is different than growth. So that's something we haven't really talked about and neither one of them are the right answer, but I just want you to put that in your mind as you're making some decisions here. So what most people miss is that tech is just a tool. That's why we put it as our second section. Um, and number one was all about data, vision, and people. Um, so people get really fascinated by tech and they're like, this is so exciting and you must be a genius to run the tech. So they look to technology people like they are kind of this all important being and they say, make the tool do the thing. And the tech person is really excited. They're like, yes, the tool can do that thing. I'm gonna make it so for you. But then the problem is that back at the ranch, the people in the processes are the real MVPs um, in the lifeblood of the business. And too often they don't sync up. So you can look at it this way. A master chef can cook a gourmet meal with an egg and a pot and a knife. And you can buy an Instapot with a bunch of buttons and still cook a meal that your dog won't eat. I would say kids, but kids won't eat a lot of stuff, but dogs will eat just about anything. So here's another example. A professional photographer can use a Polaroid instant camera and take National Geographic worthy photos and you can take you can buy a $5,000 camera and um, take a photo that looks like a cheap Polaroid. So what is the disconnect there? You really, here's the, here's the deal, here's the metaphor. If there's anything I love a lot, it's a metaphor. You have to be a master chef at business and business planning. And business is all, in order to be successful with e-commerce and Business is all about people and processes. Technology is just better pens and pencils. Um, so here's a, another clip from Sam um, at Epicourt talking about the importance of people and business versus people in business versus technology. Take it away, Sam. Oh, it's up to the business. What I've learned in, in life, in on the work part of life, is that Businesses are successful because of the business leadership and the owners, mm -hmm. If, as long as the owners are in the business, or there's a leadership team there, whoever it is. That's a success. Technology can help a business greatly um, do better, create better processes, create better business decisions, and really build um, tools to say, am I, if I want to try something, is it successful or not? Is it in the boundaries I want to be in? Uh, it can help with cash flow, productivity. It can help with customer engagement, loyalty. 
And then the decision, that's all. It's a tool. Software is a tool. The businesses are just successful from the leadership. And they don't have to have technology. It just makes their life easier. So let's talk about the people that you need in order to open a new e-commerce location. And remember, this is an additional location. It's like you have your brick and mortar store and maybe you have another one and maybe you have a third one and then you have your e-com, so you have four. Or you have brick and mortar and your regular one and you have one. So um, many times I ask the question to people, among your staff, how many people are going to spend how many hours a week managing products and inventory and then they say to me well doesn't the computer just do that and then i say no calculators only give you the right answer if somebody asks the right questions and put in the data and here's an example that you can i think will help connect with you your e-commerce website cannot pick itself up and walk out into the garden center and do a count of hosta on the bench to make sure that whatever the, however many hosta the website says are available, actually match the physical inventory. A human has to do that step among other things. And that is where your process comes in to make sure that everybody's doing the things they need to do at the right time. So knowing that you need people dedicated to run your website, who do you need? Well, you can't do anything without a project manager to run the e-commerce arm. It's really its own beast. And let's hear from Little Prince of Oregon, a wholesale nursery in Oregon that hired someone specifically to start selling retail online. And that's Joan. So take it away, Joan. Okay. Hi, I'm Joan from Little Prince. I'm the marketing manager here. I was actually hired to produce a online e-commerce site for Little Prince. And uh, Little Prince has been a wholesaler for over 20 years. They're really good at it. Plants are amazing and really well known in the Pacific Northwest in garden centers in Oregon and Washington. We really tried hard at the beginning to start from nothing. We tested packaging. We ordered plants from everywhere we could think of and decided what was important to us about the presentation, how to successfully ship the plants. So we decided that was the most important thing to us was to have recyclable materials for the most part and uh, have the box arrive in the best condition as possible with plants being healthy. And we really started out putting processes in place to make sure that if we did grow quickly, that we could successfully ship these plants. That's something you have to all educate yourself about this, even though you are relying on your web developers, you're relying on these people that know you also have to educate yourself so you can manage them because you, it's your baby, right? You need to make sure your baby's fed. Thanks, Joan. Now, what are some things you need to consider to keep the machine running? Is maintaining a customer-friendly outlet the job of your data entry person or your in-house web manager or your project manager? Maybe one person is wearing all the hats like Joan, so we're going to hear a little bit more from Joan. You have to peel through all of that because you have to categorize your plants, and it's a huge job, right? categorizing the zones and the water requirements and the sun requirements and how this relates to this and what categories are we going to choose? Are you going to have shade plants? Or are you going to have ferns? Are you going to have hostas? You know, like this, this whole thing is complicated because you need to, you, you have to think of all that to make it as simple as possible for the customer to use your website. Another thing is, which I didn't think about, is there are certain words that people search for for the plants. And that is something that our web developers did help us with. They made us think about Semper Vivum, hens and chicks. What, you know, what are all these house leaks? What are all these words people are going to use to search for to drive them back to your website? Thanks, Joan. Those were some really good details about what you face on the ground as a multidisciplined e-commerce manager. 
Now, it's also important to have a competent web developer. We haven't talked about that yet, but what you really need to have is someone to manage your web developer properly. That is key. So here's a clip of me talking with Sam about this very issue, and I did not really expect to be using this clip, so please excuse in no particular order the fact that I'm sitting on my bed, my hair, and that my video editor had to bleep out some curse words. Enjoy. People, it really is the people. Even today, Steph was out. So one of our clients, like their developers just wouldn't get done for since March. I've been like pounding on on the client to get their developer to do this. And, and Steph had a call with the developer today and she was like, they're just not being managed. She yeah. said, they're fine. They know what they're doing, but they don't do business in writing. They don't have meeting notes. They have no processes and procedures. They have no close out document if they got hit by a bus the client is completely f like and so we wrote we did a video and sent it to the client and we were like hey we had a talk with developers today here's what we'd like to do we would like you to authorize at least five hours so we can you know like help you manage your developer get all this documentation in this place like you don't need to fire them it's fine they're good they just need someone to manage them and i saw where they wrote back and said angels started singing when I watch your video. I'm so happy for someone to do it. And I mean, so the developers are fine. And I had, I talked to them way back when like in March and I thought the same thing. I'm like, they're fine, but I don't know why they won't do what the client's asking. And it's a people problem. All right. So what we've learned is that the people who have been instructed to build your website are only as good as their building plans and their foreman or their manager. You have to manage your web developer. And now I need to clarify something here. And that is that your web developer is not usually your general IT person and you do need both. And a lot of businesses don't have both. Your IT person will help you with questions like our info at mygardencenter.com email isn't working, or I need a software update on my computer so I can keep running my inventory management program, or I need a new password management system. So finally, one extremely important part of running e-commerce is the customer service component. Um, and so we're gonna hear from Joan about that. Do you get very many questions or do people seem to read the FAQ or where you have the, do you have a cart notice? Where does it tell them if you place an order? It does tell them in the cart, but people the cart. don't read it. <clears throat> you get my service is a huge part of this. You get tons of questions. I have some canned answers I've made over time and we have tried to put it in frequently asked questions. No one reads that. So you really have to dedicate a lot of time to customer service and be willing to hold hands. And that's a big part of this, which if you're a garden center, you already know all about that. For someone like us, it's wholesale customer. It's pretty new. And luckily I have willing spirits around here that almost everyone that works in this office owned a garden center of their own at one point. And our head grower is very knowledgeable. So I think I'm pretty knowledgeable, but I'm in this office probably the least knowledgeable about plants. And I'm the one that's answering the question. So I'm luckily I have a huge resource, um, but it's a lot. Yeah. That's, that's a big part of this. Thanks, Joan. That was great information. I love Joan. I could talk to her all day long. She does a great job with little prints. Okay. So you can't necessarily have a build it and they will come mentality about e-commerce. Just because you open a new store doesn't mean people know it's there. You will need to designate people to handle your marketing for your e-com site. And it is definitely a different beast than marketing for your brick and mortar retail. We are going to be covering the ins and outs of marketing and planning for your e-commerce marketing in our third session, which is February 17th. And much like this se session, you'll get tons of goodies, including plans and marketing copy and templates along with your registration. All right, it's time to go to our final breakout before we reconvene for one last Q&A session. And during this breakout, my team and I will provide you with the handout link again and the Facebook links, and you can talk with each other about your next steps, which hopefully include filling out your planning worksheets. So we will see you in 10 for Q&A.